the significance of the 12 gates in Revelation uh, 21. What's, what's the significance of these 12 gates? Now, you have to understand that the 12 gates in Revelation 21 belong to the, to the new Jerusalem, which comes down from heaven to the new earth. And uh, it, it, it is shining with the glory of God, which is uh, described very well in verse 11. Now, John describes the city that it had a great high wall with 12 gates and with the 12 angels at the gate. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? The 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, I don't know if I have a picture of this. Yes. Uh, sorry. Let me just show you this first. Huh? The 12 gates were... The, the, the gates were written with the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. And the gates are miraculous in their construction. Okay? Now let me come here. They are very miraculous in their construction. The 12 gates were 12 pearls. Okay? Each gate made of a single pearl. That's really beautiful. And the gates of the New Jerusalem will never be shut. Okay? This, you, you ask yourself, they will never be shut. How will it be like this? They, they are they're of pearl and they never be shut. And it's so beautiful according to what the Bible is explaining. In order to understand the significance of the 12 gates, which are being inscribed in the names of the 12 tribes, we must look to the beginning of the Old Testament when God promised a new land and a new and a great nation to Abraham whose descendant will uh, spread blessings upon other nations. You remember what the Bible says in Genesis 12 verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house and to a land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed so through abraham through abraham all nations would be blessed hmm okay so to abraham's grandson you remember jacob okay to abraham's uh, uh, grandson who is called uh, israel or jacob eh? whom later god named israel if you can remember very well, he had 12 sons. And these 12 sons were born to establish the 12 tribes of Israel. That is according to Genesis 32, 28. You can go and read there. And uh, in Genesis, uh, still on, the, on the, uh, the same point of Genesis, those 12 tribes escaped slavery in Egypt and inherited the promised land. Exodus 6.14 and also Exodus 24 verse 4. Go and read there. And they received the law. Okay, you understand the law in Exodus 20? And they were chosen by God to be his covenant people. Now, during the reign of uh, King David, uh, during the reign of King David, out of all the territories of the tribes of Israel, God chose the city of Jerusalem in Judah as a place where God's name would rest. Go and read Second Chronicles 12 verse 13. Or let me just show you this. I think this is critical. Let me just uh, show you this. I'll just be reading a, a couple of verses and others I'll just mention so that I don't take much time. Now, Second Chronicles 12 13. See, so, so King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem and reigned for Rehoboam was one and 40 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 17 years in jerusalem the city which the lord had chosen out of all the tribes of israel to put his name there and his mother's name was nama and amorite ammonites okay so jesus himself he chose this city the city of jerusalem i want to show you how the story progresses so beautiful of a story now revelation uh, speaks of the new Jerusalem that has been prepared for the reign of the Lamb. This new Jerusalem. 
it speaks about that. Hmm. Revelation 21 from verse 1 to 3, it speaks about this. And I think because this is a verse which I was uh, which we are all talking about, let me just read for you. Revelation 21 uh, verse 1. See about this city which is being spoken here. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So this new Jerusalem will come from heaven, adorned as a bride for a husband. It will be so beautiful, so, so beautiful. Now, this new Jerusalem will have some gates, okay? He loves some, some, some gates. And uh, these gates will be a representation of uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. And also, you have to understand that this new Jerusalem will sit on 12 foundations. Let me go back here. There will be foundations. These are the gates and they are foundations. Now, these foundations, these foundations are uh, the, the foundations of the 12 apostles. You remember this Christ being the cornerstone. You remember how the Bible says that Christ is the cornerstone. And that the 12 foundations are the apostles who laid the foundation of faith, the gospel of grace. Are you seeing the point? So these 12 apostles will reign over the 12 tribes of Israel. Their foundation will reign over the 12 tribes of Israel because they'll be down there. They'll be the foundations. And then now the gates, these gates, will be now the 12 tribes of Israel. Each gate will have a name. Okay? Where is it? Each gate will have a name. Reuben, Judah, Levi, uh, Joseph, Benjamin, Dan, Simeon, Ishakar, Zebulun, Gad, Asha, and Naphtali. So, I, I, are you seeing the difference? Are you, are you understanding? And of course, you can go and read uh, uh, the Bible in Matthew 19, verse 28, and Luke 22 to 23. It will give you about a picture about what I'm talking about. Now, the gates of the city are symmetrically, uh, symmetrically arranged. Okay? Uh, let me show you about these gates. They are symmetrically arranged. There, there were three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. Okay? As written in Revelation 21 verse 13. And each gate of the new Jerusalem bears the inscription of one of the tribes of Israel, like I've read to you. Each gate is guarded by an angel. Revelation 21 verse 12. And these angels, these angels are there to let in only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Only those ones. Let me read this one for you. Revelation 21, 27. Revelation 21, uh, 27. Let me just pull down here. 21, 27. And there shall, there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they... But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So unless your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, you'll not be able to enter that city. This is, this is amazing. Now, many scholars see a link between the New Jerusalem with its three gates per side and the city of the Millennial Kingdom seen there by the prophet Ezekiel. You remember the prophet Ezekiel in... Uh, Ezekiel uh, 48, 30 uh, to 34. I'll just uh, paraphrase a couple of things which he said. You can go and read there. It's a bit long. Um, this will be the exits of the city. He, he speaks about the exits of the city. Beginning on the north side, the gates of the city will be named under the tribes of Israel. The, the three gates of the north side will be the gates of Reuben, 
uh, the uh, gate of Judah and the gate of Levi. On the east side will be the gates uh, of Joseph, Benjamin and gate of Dan. On the south side will be three gates, the gate of Simeon, gate of Issachar and the gate of Zebulun. On the west, there are three, three gates also, the gates of God, the gates of Jasha, and the gates of Naphtali. You can also go and check uh, Numbers 2, where God specified that the, the three tribes would encamp on each side of the tent of meeting in the wilderness. Well, it was basically foreshadowing and showing the same kind of picture. The same kind of picture. Okay? I don't know if you're understanding this. So... What are we to make from all this? Let's break down now eh? the description of the gates in Revelation 21 uh, and have a more kind of careful look about the same. Now, the gates of the New Jerusalem are inscribed with the names of the 12 tribes. Okay, with the 12 tribes of Israel. Because Israel was chosen by God to be a light to all the nations. Remember Isaiah 40, 49 verse 5 to 7? They were chosen. Isaiah uh, 49, uh, 49 verse um, 5. Okay. We can read to verse 7. It says, And now says the Lord that formed me from the womb, to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him, through Israel not be gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, it is a, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore, restore the preserved Israel. I will also give thee for a light Israel, I will give thee for a light to the Gentiles that you may be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Are you seeing? We are a light. That, I mean, Israel is a light to us, the Gentiles. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his only one to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abro abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall raise, princes shall also worship, because of the Lord that is faithful, and the Holy One of Israel that shall choose thee. So Israel, Israel is a light to the Gentiles, to all the nations. Israel is a light. And also you can see Romans 9, 23 to 25. I don't have time to check that. So God will never revoke Israel's status as his chosen people. Remember the Bible says that all Israel will be saved. Okay? You remember that? In Romans 11, 29. The new Jerusalem, therefore, will contain a tribute to the patriarchs of Israel. Okay? The patriarchs of Israel. Okay? They'll be there. They'll be there. It will be a, like a co constant memory. The constant memory about the same. It also contains a tribute to the apostles. Because the apostles, they did great work. It is from the apostles that you have the, the gospel has spread all over the world. Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Okay? So, the foundation is Israel. And the gates, I mean, the foundations are the 12 apostles. And the gates are Israel. Are you seeing how beautiful the new Jerusalem will be? Now, you have to understand one thing, that uh, the new Jerusalem will be filled with the elect of God from all, from all eras and all places. And this, this is something that you have to understand, and uh, I, I know this is a very confusing topic, but I'm trying to, to, be, to break it down as simple as I can. Now, Romans chapter 9 makes a distinction between physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their spiritual descendants. Now, those who exercise the same faith in God uh, as the patriarchs did, eh? the same faith in God as the, these patriarchs did, eh? 
they are called descendants of Abraham. Just as not all Gentiles come to the light of the world, some Jews did not uh, they, they, they did not choose the light they chose to live in darkness remember not all Jews there are some Jews who refused and those who refused they'll be they'll be out of the game just the same way even the Gentiles right now the Bible is being preached people are being preached the gospel is being preached but not all of them are accepting just the same way that uh, you have to understand that they are what we call the children of promise Israel, Abraham had two, two children. One was a child of promise, Isaac, and another one was not a child of promise. Who was uh, called uh, Ishmael. He was not a child of promise. Just the same, same way, those who believe in Christ, they are the children of promise. Those who don't believe in Christ, they are not children of promise. You have to understand that. So you have to get that difference. Okay. Now, because because not all the children by physical descent are God's children, but it is the children of promise who are targeted and regarded as Abraham's offspring. Then now this one gives us a picture of the people who will get into that city, that great city. These are the people who have faith in Christ. So if you want to become a child of promise, then you have to have faith in who? In Christ. Go and read the Romans 9 from verse 6 to 8. And also Romans 2, 28 to 29. And John uh, 8, 39 to 47. It speaks about having faith in Christ so that you can become a child of promise who will be able to enter where? In the new Jerusalem. So those who have faith in Christ, they are accountable, they are counted as the spiritual seed of Abraham. Okay, let me read this one for you. I think this one is it's important to read. Galatians uh, 3 verse 29. So if you have faith, then you are counted as a child of Abraham's seed. See, and if you be in Christ. And if you be Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heir according to the promise. So there's a promise that we have. You will be here in this God's kingdom. Only if you're a descendant or you're a child of Abraham, by what? By faith. Are you seeing the point? So it will be true Israel only who have trusted in Jesus, that you have to understand, that those who will enter the kingdom of heaven, okay? As also it is through the 12 gates of the new Jerusalem that the true tribal people, the believers of the Jewish descent, as well as the Gentiles who have been grafted in with God's people, will be able to enter, okay? Will be able to enter here. So if you're not a believer in Christ, you'll not be able to enter in this kingdom. Why? Do you remember in the Garden of Eden? You remember Garden of Eden? Uh, let me show you this. Garden of Eden. You remember when uh, Adam and Eve, they became disobedient? What happened? Angels came and they chased them away from that Garden of Eden. And only... Righteous people will be able to go back there. So this new Jerusalem is basically a same representation of the same thing. There will be angels, okay? There will be angels gui uh, guarding this. Uh, where, where do I have a picture of an angel here? Guarding the... Uh, where is it? Where is it? I had a picture here of the angels guarding... Mm -hmm. Guarding the city. Guarding the city. Guarding the city. Where? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yes, here. Here it is. So there'll be angels also, the same way in the Garden of Eden, there were angels guarding that Garden of Eden, which is so beautiful that uh, no sinful being will be able to enter. Are you seeing the point? So the same thing also will happen. Same thing also will happen. 
So the 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 pearl you have to understand when you talk about the pearl, the pearl was was esteemed one of the greatest value among the the Asians, and is an appropriate emblem of the highest truth. It is the only precious stone which the art and skill of man cannot improve. And that's why I think God is trying to show us these are the kind of things which will be there. <laughs> so, in Revelation 21 verse 21, it, it talks about this and telling us about this imagery of this, the pearl will be some of the things which are in the gates. So showing that it's it's not just man. Man could not cannot be able to comprehend what will be in that uh, uh, new Jerusalem. And the imagery calls to mind Jesus' parable of the pearl of a great price. You remember uh, the, the parable of Jesus about the pearl? In Matthew 13, verse 45 to 46, it speaks about this. So it trying to show us about how great value that city will be. This is the city that is worth more than anything in this present world. And its builder and maker is God. Remember what uh, the book of Hebrews says? Hebrews uh, 11 verses uh, 10. It tells us the maker of that city, that great city, is God. For he looketh for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is who? God. God is the maker of this city, this new Jerusalem. He's the maker himself. He's the maker. And the gates of the new Jerusalem will never close. Yes, they're made of pearl, but they never close because God himself is the maker and he has designed it in his own way. I don't know how. They are eternal safety and peace. They are the, 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 and peace for everyone in the New Jerusalem. There are no enemies to shut the gates against. Access to the heavenly kingdoms on the earth is free and unhindered. And the glory and honor of the nation will be brought into it. As the Bible tells us in Revelation 21 verse 26, all that glory will come into it. Are, are you seeing how beautiful this city will be? And why you should desire to be in that city? See? And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever who, uh, whosoever worketh abomination or makes a lie. And uh, they, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Only those ones will be able to enter that great city. Because the gates, the, the gates, face every direction of the compass and their perpetual uh their perpetual uh compass uh, openness invites anyone to partake of the goodness of god's grace so this is a city that we should desire to be in you can hear how beautiful and how great and how beautiful and how glorious it will be so uh the 12 gates signify the 12 uh, tribes of israel okay the 12 tribes of Israel. And it's very important for you to be able to understand this because it's really, really important to understand. It's only through the Israel, Israel that we are able to enter into this city because they were chosen of God to be the light, the light unto the nations. Yes, there are some who will uh, disagree with God and who will refuse, but the Bible tells us it is only through them that you have been able to be saved. And the foundations, the foundations is the 12, uh, the 12 apostles, okay? So I, I think that one has made some sense. So if you're there and you're still looking and asking, how will I be a partaker of this? Then you have to believe the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's all about understanding how and why Jesus had to die. Let's start with why. Why did Jesus have to die? Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and rose again. As is written in the scriptures in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. So how did Jesus die? He died by shedding his blood. The Bible says without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So blood had to be a component for forgiveness of sins to be. But not just any other ordinary blood. It had to be a sinless, perfect blood. Why? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. 
Leviticus 17, 11. So the blood had to be taken out of a, of a sinless creature like Jesus Christ so that it can atone for our sins. Why? Because we are sinners. The Bible says there is no one holy, not even one. All men have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. But 2,000 years ago, while we were still sinners, one man called Jesus, he laid his life for us so that whosoever will believe in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. Do you believe that Jesus died for you? Do you believe that? If you believe, please kindly tell Jesus in a prayer that now, Jesus, I understand that you died for my sins. You were buried and rose again as is written in the scriptures. I believe in you and I accept your payment for sin, which you paid for me so that I can be able to be saved. And once you do that, my friends, you're saved. And you will be in this great city. You'll enjoy and you'll be there and you'll witness all these kind of things. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope um, you've been able to be blessed. If you like this video, please give it a, a thumbs up. And uh, also you can share the video for others to be able to watch. And also you can uh, subscribe to watch more videos. And also in the description, I have uh, links to other videos and other channels that I have. Please go and check them out. And uh, let's encourage each other. God bless you and have a great, great time.